Well, good afternoon. We are out here in the park at La Casa, and uh, it's the first weekend of 2021, and and we're uh, looks like because of the pandemic has uh, got us closed down again, but we will be doing the videoing, and we appreciate you watching today, and we hope that uh, God blesses us through the uh, ministry of the Word and through the sermon of, of the day. And let me uh, let me open with a word of prayer first our gracious Heavenly Father we thank you God for who you are we thank you for a new year 2021 the the old one is gone 2020 and you blessed us even through trying times and I pray that you just be with us this year in 2021 this is the second day of the year happy new year Lord and I pray that you would just be with us in everything we say and do may we minister to those around us may we uh, follow your direction may you give us wisdom and guidance and i know god right now there's people that are sick and ill and some in the hospital and some at home recovering and i pray that you just be with them right now and uh, guide them and direct them lord and help us all to just get over this uh, virus and uh, be able to go on and do your will and and uh, trust in you and everything that's said and done and we'll be careful to give you the praise this day. Amen. Amen. Our reading today will be the first through the 12th verses of the second chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. And as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the return to their country by another route. Well, this uh, this message was one I was going to do last week. However, it didn't work work out that way. But it really fits into uh, uh, the new year, the, the the brand new year that we're in. Like I prayed, we are in uh, uh, we are in the second day of 2021, and the scripture that was read. Uh, by Steve uh, says that that uh, now after days were after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod the king behold wise men from the east came to Jerusalem the wise men from the east now if you read the story and the uh, t the events that took place the wise men actually saw the star in the sky and followed the star to Bethlehem after Jesus was born and it took them a little bit of a journey to get there well who were these wise men where were they from uh, how did they receive the message why did they come such a long ways what did they bring with them well the wise men it's <clears throat> it says that that in the scripture it says where is he who is born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him how did they know about Jesus Christ? Evidently, they had been told, they had been studied. 
uh, studied all about uh, what had happened in the Old Testament even the, of the forecoming of Jesus Christ. Well, the wise men, by the words, indicates that these people possessed a special knowledge or wisdom that, uh, that the average person did not have. The wise men talked about in the scripture reading, talks about the magi. Now, it talks about, we, we all have heard about the three, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. Well, actually, if, if you study it, there could have been up to 12 magi that were traveling together to come and see what had happened. And they came from, the three magi that are mentioned, came from Mesopotamia, which is now Iraq, and then Persia or Iran, or even further east than that. And the history says that their names were uh, uh, Belthazar from maybe from Air, uh, Arabia, and Melchior, which is the king of Persia, and Gaspar, which was the king of India. Now these, these people were <clears throat> religious uh, leaders and philosophical teachers. The wise men were students of the stars where they had a lot of knowledge and understanding of the stars. Now just a, a week or so ago on the 21st, we saw the two uh, planets lining up together and it looked like one big star and you, as you could look and see it, you could see that there were actually two stars there or two planets that were lining up and yet th this is called, this was called the Christmas star because it was so bright because the two of them together. Maybe this is what the Magi saw. <clears throat> but they did follow it. They followed, the, they followed the star and was led by the Lord to, to Bethlehem to, in search of this King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So God incorporated the, His plan in revealing His Son that would be born in Bethlehem. Now remember we talked about a couple of weeks ago the angels visiting the shepherds. And the shepherds were the lowly people. I mean, during the census, <clears throat> they weren't even notified that there was a census because they'd had no, no background, no knowledge, no education. They were just lowly nobodies. And yet these, key, these, these magi, these wise men, were very knowledgeable. They had studied a lot. They were, the, they were very intelligent all over the world at that time. <clears throat> they were not the lowly people. So now we've got a we've got a vision of of God's plan for the lowly people or the ones that that, that society says are, are not really uh, important. They're just nobodies. And then you see the ones that are at the other end of the spectrum that are very wise. They're wiser than any of the kings or the scribes or Pharisees of the day. And God ministers to every one of us in everything that we do from from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. So God gave the Magi an awareness of truth just as he gives us awareness of the truth. The difference is, as we read in the scripture, the Magi followed the star and followed uh, the direction that God had given to them and they listened. They listened to the Lord. And they arrived at the conclusion that the sign was of a special birth. This was of the, the birth of the, of, the, of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and they were going to go find out what happened. Well, these wise men were very busy people, but at the time, they saw the star and made the choice. They made a choice in their life to follow Jesus. Have you done that today? Have you, is that your choice? So as we read in the scripture, it says, For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. They came with a purpose. Their purpose was to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They had to travel some distance. We don't know how far it was because evidently it was, it was quite a ways to the east of where uh, Bethlehem was. <clears throat> but you wonder why God just didn't say, okay, I'm gonna pick out a wise man that's maybe 10 or 15 miles away and they can travel. Why he didn't do that? We, we don't know that, that answer to that question. But it was God's decision to select these wise men from a far east and, and let them follow the star. It was their choice to follow. But with choice comes obstacles. 
We have obstacles in our life too. We may get up on Sunday morning and decide to come to church. And we get all ready and we go out to the car and we got a flat tire. Well, we could either say, okay, I'm going to change the tire. I'm going to have to clean up my hands and, and all that. And I'm going, to clean up the, the, I'm going to clean it up and change my flat and I'm going to get to church. Or we could possibly say, oh, maybe that's the reason I don't... Uh, the, re the reason I got a flat is because I don't need to go to church today. So you, you choose not to go to church. On one hand, you go to church. On the other hand, you don't. Obstacles in our life. We've had a lot of obstacles in, uh, in 2020, haven't we? A lot of obstacles that we've had to, to, uh, to get around. But <clears throat> the wise men considered all the obstacles they were going to face if they were going to follow this star and go to wherever it led them. They didn't know where it was going to lead. They didn't know that they were going to go from, from the Far East to Bethlehem. They just started following this, this star. They knew that the distance was really great, so they were going to have a long ways to go. They, could also, they also looked at the obstacle of how safe was it. Now, in those days, if you traveled, there was, there was a lot of, of uh, thieves, and robbers and murderers all along the way that they were going to have to tend with. So they, they had to look out for their own safety. There's also the mode of transportation. What kind of mode do you take, take, uh, take for that long trip? It's either a camel or it maybe a donkey, maybe elephants, whatever they had, they had to travel a long distance or they might, may even have walked. It's not like getting in your car and just driving down the road and I'm going to take a drive to Bethlehem and and it'll take me two or three hours to get there. They had to do, that, that, that obstacle they had was actually to walk or ride a camel or a donkey. So life has a lot of obstacles. We're gonna have a lot of obstacles in 2021 that we do not know. It's gonna be full of obstacles. How you handle this, only God knows. But we need to look to God to be able to get around all these obstacles in this in this new year and bypass them. What obstruction are we gonna have? What are we gonna follow for our directions? Are we gonna follow our, our GPS that's in our vehicle? Well, we can't because if we're following life's, life's route that we're gonna get to to heaven, we've gotta follow the obstacle or the uh, GPS that God has given us, which is the Bible. That's our GPS, God's positioning system. And you may consider some, when we consider some tasks that we're, we're going to be having during this year, we got to remember the scripture that says, with all things, all things with God is possible. In all things with God, it's possible. So what is your decision going to be? What will your choices be when you come up to a trial or an obstacle that gets in your way? Now, as we read in the scripture, it says, in Matthew, it says, when... King Herod heard this, heard about this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's pre, uh, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied. He was scared. He was terrified. He was disturbed, and all the leaders were, because they heard about this new King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They, 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 they didn't understand how it could be this new king could come as a baby, but they were disturbed because they knew that there was going to be another power that may contend with them, that they, were, they may lose their, their power, their kingdom. Herod was a very ruthless and mean and cruel king. He murdered members of his, of, of his family. He had a lot of power, but he had no compassion for anyone. Herod's mindset and thinking was that what goes on in our it is just very similar to what goes on in our world today. We have a lot of people that are in power today that think that is that is the main thing in life. If I can get more money or more power, that um, life is good, right? I will have no obstacles to to go around. But yet, King Herod he tried to restore his his. Uh, uh, he, he, he tried to restore the friendship of the people by actually looking to build the, the temple because he thought that would make him look good in the eyes of the people. Yet it didn't. He was still a ruthless, 
ruthless, mean king. <clears throat> People are going to be critical of us in our decisions that we make this year. What, whatever decision you may make this year, make it with the true wisdom that comes from the Lord. And it may not be popular. It's not going to be popular with people around us. While King Herod was afraid of someone more powerful than he, he did not realize that at, 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 uh, at some point every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he didn't realize that because he thought everybody bowed at his feet. And we have people in power today that think everybody should bow at their feet. Yet we need to every at, at the when judgment day comes every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord amen? amen wise men at that time were looking for hope their hope was in the one that would govern their earthly life <clears throat> as well as their eternal life is that what we're doing today does aren't people looking for that hope of, of someone that will judge and govern our earthly life and our eternal life maybe some people don't believe in, in, in life eternal yet I do and and I know a lot of you do but each of us is looking for somebody that is greater than us that's greater than us someone who can provide all the essentials that we require all of our needs that we have someone who is concerned about us and love us unconditionally now there you go. Who are you going to find that's going to love us unconditionally? We're also looking for someone who's willing to guide us and lead us down the righteous path and the right path. Someone to, that we can be obedient to. Someone who can, we can be truly committed to. We can be committed to the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. There were some people looking for some question and it the scripture says they ask, well, where is he that is born king? They didn't know. They had no idea where they were supposed to go to find this king of kings and lord of lords. They were looking for him. The wise men were looking for the king and carried, a div that, uh, carried that divine title from that day that he was born. Are you searching for the king of kings, the prince of peace, the lord of lords today? Are you looking for that person? I can tell you where you can find him. Then we read in the scripture, it says, When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. <clears throat> when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. They fell down and worshipped Jesus Christ the Lord. At the feet of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what the wise men did. Are you a wise man today? Or wise woman today? Are you looking to worship the Lord Jesus Christ? So we read in the scripture, it says that these wise men brought gifts. They brought gifts. They brought gold. <clears throat> probably the, the uh, Melchior, the, the, the king of uh, Persia, probably brought the gold. What does gold mean? Well, gold is the metal of kings. When the gold was presented to Jesus, it acknowledged his right to rule. His right to rule. The wise men knew that Jesus Christ was the King of Kings. Then they brought frankincense. That probably came from Gaspar, which is the King of India. And it was used in the temple uh, worship. It was mixed with oil that was used to anoint the priests of Israel. In presenting this gift, the wise men pointed that Christ as our great high priest, the one whose whole life was acceptable and well pleasing to his father. Remember when, when Jesus Christ uh, went into the water to be baptized, and and the dove came down, and God says, "This is my son, whom I am well pleased." Frankincense. Then there was myrrh. <clears throat> myrrh was used for embalming. Now that's a little bit strange, 
to give a newborn baby myrrh, which is used for embalming. But it was. It was not of offensive. It was there to, to be presented to the Christ as a spi spice. And it, wasn't in, it, it, was, it was intended to be a gift of faith. A gift of faith. We do not know exactly what the, the wise men may have, may have thought about what Christ's uh, ministry was going to be. They probably didn't even realize that what he was going to have to go through in the next, in the next uh, 33 years of his life. But it was there because in the Old Testament it was foretold that the Christ would come and his, his uh, coming was foretold as suffering. So they brought that. So when we became a Christian, what gifts do you bring? What gifts do we bring to the Lord? Well, the first thing we can bring is myrrh. Because that not only symbols the, the death, but it also symbols the spiritual death. When we become a Christian, we die out to sin. And that's where myrrh comes in. And you pray, Lord, at, at, uh, your, at Christ's feet, Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I am less than perfect than you are, and I'm a sinner, and I know that I uh, should receive the consequence of death, which is, uh, which is for me, but you took the sin upon me in my place, and I believe that, and now I ask you to accept me as a child forever. Is that the prayer you prayed when, when you accepted Christ into your life? As Philippians says, For me... To live is Christ, and to die is gain. Then the next, the next gift we may bring is the gift of incense. Incense. After we have done, given our life to the Lord, we acknowledge Him by presenting incense, which is knowing that our life is and has been a very impure life. We were filled with sin. We were guilt-ridden. And yet Jesus Christ paid it all for us and, and covered our sins with the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a fragrant, fragrant uh, offering, and, and we are now pleasing in the sight of God. In Romans uh, 3.23 it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Then the next gift that we may bring to the Lord is the, is the gift of gold the gift of gold, which, which symbolizes royalty. And in that, we are acknowledging the right for Jesus Christ to rule our heart and to rule our life. We bring, we bring gold. You may say in a, in a prayer, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your servant, you are my master, direct my life and lead me in, in it so that I might grow up spiritually to honor and serve you serve you accordingly is that your prayer do you bring those gifts to the Lord when you became a Christian the gift of myrrh incense and gold which is your total life all these gifts the wise men gave were precious but the most precious gift they they could give was themselves their themselves and their time they traveled a long time across many many miles through a lot of different obstacles and they, they did that because out of the love that they had for their Lord and King. John Wesley wrote these words, uh, I give myself completely to you, God. Assign me to my place in your creation. Let me suffer for you. Give me the work you would have me to do. Give me many tasks. Or have me step aside while you call others to fill those shoes. Put me forward or humble me. Give me riches or let me live in poverty. I fully give all that I am and all that I have to you. Is that your prayer today? The wise men followed the star, the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of Lord. The light shines forth for each of God's children. We, who have accepted Him as our personal Savior, bathe daily in the light and love of His, of his uh, goodness. If you've come believing in all of that, you'll bring the myrrh and the incense and the gold to signify 
the great spiritual joy and blessing that we have. Amen? Those are the gift of faith. Those are the gifts of faith. They're the only things that we can offer to the one that has given us everything that he had. God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That was the gift that was given to each one of us. Have you seen the star? Are you searching for Jesus Christ in your life? Are you following Christ as your Lord in your life? Even if the choice that you make is a very unpopular one? Are you following the star no matter what life's obstacles are? Have you come to worship Christ the Lord? Have you made the right choice in 2021 already to follow Jesus Christ as the light of your life today? If you haven't, you can today. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you for shining your light upon me and for being compassionate and loving. Thank you for seeing my need and coming to earth in a humble beginning. Now I ask if there's anyone out there today that's listening to my ears or listening to these words today, if you have not accepted Christ as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings in your life, then make that choice today to follow the star as the wise men do. It's never too late. 2021 is a new year, and what better way to start than with a clean slate of allowing Jesus Christ to lead your life each and every day. Lord, continue to speak to us each day in this new year that we live a holy life acceptable to you. Help us to hear your voice. Continue to use me each day in spreading the good news that Jesus Christ came to save us and to give us hope of eternal life with him. Bring a revival now at the beginning of this new year and let it spread through the whole year that we may see sinners one to you. Be with us, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we ended some of the other uh, services the last few weeks with the uh, with a little chorus, uh, Oh, Come Let Us Adore Him. Let's do that today because I think it's very appropriate that we need to worship our Lord and start the, start the new year with a, with a good positive positive attitude that we're going to come and worship the Lord uh, this year in everything that we say and do. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. For He alone is worthy. For He alone is worthy. For He alone is worthy. Christ the Lord. Well, you all have a very, very happy new year. And may God bless you and enrich you this very year.